The following feature presentation is part of the Skywalking Network. This is Peter Renaday. I am the Ghost Host, and I'm Skywalking through Neverland. <laughs> <laughs> Trick or treat! Darling, this is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and I'm skywalking through Neverland. Are you? <laughs> hey, hey, Skywalkers! Welcome to the Skywalking Through Neverland Halloween Holiday Special. Now, I bet you're thinking, Holiday Special? Will they be doing most of this in Wookiee grunts and growls? I bet you're also asking, will there be a seven-minute erotic Interlude from Diane Carroll? Most likely not. Will there be singing about a day of peace and a day of harmony? I can guarantee we won't. But we will be going over some of the most compelling questions by us and answers by you about Halloween. So, before we get into all of that Halloween fun, we want to welcome you to... Skywalking, Skywalking Through Neverland! Neverland. <laughs> We are your enthusiastic podcast destination for the many decades of your Star Wars, Disney, Marvel, and Halloween fandom. I am Richard Woloski. Now, everyone, please, say, everyone, please say hello. I want, I want to say pumpkin-headed wife, Sarah, <laughs> but I, I, I'm going to decide against it. Please say hello to my sweetie wife, Sarah, who's wearing pumpkins on her head. <laughs> you see? I, I wasn't sure how you were gonna you were gonna take pumpkin headed wife. Okay, okay. She's wearing pumpkins on her head. You're wearing a pumpkin on your head, but I have two pumpkins that have Mickey heads on them, right? Mm -hmm. So am I better? You're always better. Okay, that always. was the right answer. <laughs> well, Skywalkers, it's time to give you all a big wampa hug <laughs> and a witch's cackle. <laughs> To our family of Skywalkers. We want to thank you all for listening to the show every week. And we also want to thank you for watching our live stream. This week especially, you'll be able to contribute live. We're super excited. And also, if you are just joining us for the first time, well, you are now a Skywalker. And we want to welcome you to our Skywalking family. We are here to bring joy on our adventure through fandom. Now, we are recording this from Long Beach, California on October the 27th, 2020, three days away from the premiere of The Mandalorian Season 2. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Watch party? Is that what you're saying, everybody? Watch party? I think so. I think this needs to happen in our Facebook group, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're working on details. Yes, because Disney does have Disney Watch on Disney+, Plus, but like it only is seven people and you know we want to include more. So yeah. we'll, we'll have a comment thread in our Facebook group and we'll pick a time to watch. And now that, of course, means that we can all watch it beforehand. I mean, we're probably going to be refreshing our Disney Plus at midnight the night before, but... But yeah, we'll all pick a time to watch it together, too. Yeah, we're kicking around some ideas upstairs. And as soon as things are solidified, we'll we'll put up a post in the Facebook group. Now, where is this upstairs you speak Shh. of? It's the upstairs penthouse office area of Skywalking Through Neverland of the Skywalking Network. Okay, the, the studio office. Yes. Yeah, I'll go with that, too. Okay, okay. Yeah, as long as we have an upstairs to kick ideas around. I love it. All right. Now, it's also the anniversary, in three more days, the anniversary of when Disney bought Lucasfilm. In 2012, right? Yeah. So what, what anniversary? That's eight years? That will be eight years. Okay. I can do math. <laughs> Hard to believe. Eight In eight years, we got, what, five films? Mm. And a TV series? Yes. And, and so much more. 
Hold on, hold on. Rex says, it's the emperor's office. Upstairs, yes, it is yes. the emperor's office. That or Fantasia Mickey. So I think know, they share it. You know what? Let's take everyone back to that day on October 30th, 2012. Where were we when we heard the news, Sarah? We were in a Halloween store. Mm-hmm. So well, Probably a spirit Halloween store. Yeah, we were at the mall, and uh, this mm-hmm. one section of the mall had been turned into a spirit Halloween store, and we were wandering the hallways, and it wasn't yet all bought out and on sale like this year. And yeah, I got a tweet. I saw a tweet, like notification come up on my phone, and we were in different aisles, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, you heard me go, Richard! <laughs> <laughs> Come over here. Look what Twitter's saying. Yes. And I'm saying, what's a Twitter? Is that a costume? Is that a costume for 2012? Yep. What is this? <laughs> and then there's the news. Disney buys Lucasfilm. Upcoming for- Star Wars Episode 7. Yes. Boom. Yeah. And we ran around the Cerritos Mall telling everyone, shaking people, it's happening. It's happening. We went, there was like a Geeky Mama store we went yeah. in right after that. We are like, did you guys hear the news? We ran in, slammed the doors open. Everyone stop what you're doing. Put everything down. I felt like Paul Revere. Star Wars Episode 7 is finally coming. Yeah. And they also mentioned that there's going to be an 8 and a 9 and standalone films. They just threw out all this news. And now, eight years later, we have all those films that they announced. Mm-hmm. Isn't that well, crazy? Not yet, because they did announce a Yoda film, a Boba Fett film, a Jabba the Hutt film. Well, at that time, they didn't, though, did they? Yeah, they were just throwing everything out oh, there. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Hoping we'd forget, but no, we didn't. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we were running into Victoria's Secret, telling everybody. We ran into every single store, just letting everyone know, letting the world know of this great news. Well, we are being sponsored. Wait a minute. Hold on here. We have one more thing to count down. I was hoping we were going to gloss over this. We're not going to gloss over this. Four more days until Halloween, which means we need to cue the Shamrock song. No, stop it. Stop it. No, no, no. Okay, so... So, for this episode, Mm -hmm. we are being sponsored... By Silver Shamrock. By Small World Vacations. Oh, yeah. They are a diamond-level Disney vacation planner travel agency and can help you book your trip to Disney parks around the world, and their service is free of charge. So head to smallworldvacations.com for a no-obligation price quote and tell them that Skywalking Through Neverland sent you. All right, Minnie... Oh, you know what? Let's hear from Minnie Mouse as if she were a Halloween witch. So she can now tell us what time it is. Minnie, Minnie the Halloween witch, what time is it? Yoo-hoo! <laughs> it's 6.12 p.m. <laughs> okay, that was, that was take one. <laughs> okay, do a, do a take two. Okay, it's Halloween. Okay, okay. It's Halloween. It's 7, I mean 6, 12 p.m. <laughs> the Wicked Witch of the West is dead. Yay! I don't know. All right. Well, let's tell everyone what's coming up on this episode. This is a spooktacular episode. Now, each day on Facebook, I posted a Halloween countdown and asked a random question. And we got a lot of great comments, so we thought it'd be fun to share these posts. Absolutely. Now, we won't do every single day since some posts were asking for pictures, like your favorite costume or show us your Halloween decorations, but we will share many of your fun answers. Now, before we go there, though, we have a Halloween treat on Terror Terror We we Want want to to Share. share. (laughs) <laughs> Not terror. things we want to share? No, terror. Terror we want to share. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> things we want to share. Things we want to share. Things we want to share. Now, one of our skywalking through Neverland highlights was getting to talk with Elvira 
back in 2014. Wow. Yeah, we were a year into skywalking through Neverland, and we were at a press event at Not Scary Farm, and Elvira was there because she does a show at Not Scary Farm. Yeah. And there was a line there for the press. We got in line, but they said, "Oh, we had to cut. We had to cut it off." The interview, the, right? The, the, yeah. the interview line. Yeah. Yeah. So we said, can we just get like a a quick promo? Like this is Elvira and I am skywalking through Neverland. She says that we're in, we're out. That's it. They said, yeah, that that that's fine. And you know what? Uh, this the next person who's going to go in for an interview, he's had it. He had to check an email or something. So she's got a couple seconds right now. Just dart right in, okay? Okay, we will. We darted in there. Hey, Miss Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, can you please say? This this promo for us, she does it, and then the her handler says, "Okay, you get five minutes." Yeah. Yeah. W- what? Yeah. <laughs> five minutes. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, okay. We didn't want to look at the people behind us because we really cut, but we knew that they were already accounted for for getting an interview. So if we said, "Oh, let's get back in line," they would have said, "Oh, never mind that." So right. You know what? <laughs> Apologize later. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So they said, okay, here you go. You get five minutes. It's like, we didn't prepare anything. <laughs> so we just went off the cuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was really interesting to speak with her and to be that close up to her because she has on this stage makeup, you know, that's very viewable from far away. But when you get up close, it's like, whoa, like the darks of her eye, like everything was like this big raccoon ring around her eyes and stuff. It was very interesting. At that point, she was in her mid-60s and yeah, yeah. Look, looking all right for well, her mid-60s. Yeah, definitely. All right. So let's go ahead and roll into our impromptu interview with Elvira, Mistress, Mistress of, of the, the Dark. dark. We are back once again at Not Scary Farm 2014 with Miss Halloween herself, Elvira. Hello. Wow. So how many years have you been here at Not Scary Farm? Uh, You will not believe. I did 21 years here. Then I took a 12-year hiatus. Now I'm back for the last two years. Uh, it's it's awesome. It's like, you know, I, I went into the grave there for a while. And I'm back. I'm alive. Now, what would be some of the highlights? Some of the highlights this year, well, well, the um, the show is called Elvira's Big Top. So there's going to be a lot, of, you know, like a three-ring circus going on under my big top, I can tell you. And uh, there's going to be a lot of different acts. There are uh, Academy of Villains who are fantastic dancers. Just uh, got done doing uh, So You Think You Can Dance. They're right. amazing. And then there's a lot of uh, freak shows, circus, sideshow acts that we're going to incorporate this year. So... That's right up my alley. I can't wait for that. Now, being Mistress of the Dark, is there something that you look forward to every Halloween here at Not Scary Farm? Yeah, I look forward to just being at the world's number one biggest, longest running, largest, you know, most fantastic Halloween venue. So I, I, I'm happy to be here. I'm more than happy. I'm thrilled. Now, is, is there a Mr. Elvira? There's not one particular Mr. Elvira. There's lots of Mr. Elvira. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, let's not go there. All right. You guys are like, oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, what scares Elvira? Uh, let's see. Doing this interview. My, my, uh, <laughs> oh, well, no. Just doing an interview scares me. But uh, pretty much nothing. I'm pretty much fearless, I'd say. Yeah. So after Halloween, all the scares are done. What do you do for vacation? You know, I just hop back in my coffin, slam the lid, and take a couple of months uh, uh, rest in there and, and kind of regenerate, and uh, <laughs> and that's kind of it. Then I come back, and I'm uh, as good as new. Do you ever hang out with the girlfriends like Lily Munster or Morticia? Oh, yeah, I hang out with those all, all the time, them, Vampira, you know. Uh, <laughs> they're my peeps, so, you know, we hang out in the hood. Now, out of all of those Morticias and Vampires and, and Lily Munsters, mm-hmm. is there one that's just not on par with you with you girls? One who mm. just wants to get catty and wants to talk oh, about Oh, is there one? Golly, I don't know. They, well, maybe I better not go there. I wouldn't name any names, you know what I'm saying? What's your favorite drink? Oh, my favorite drink. Well, you know, you would think it would be a Bloody Mary, but actually it's... Um, 
Coca-Cola because it has more caffeine. <laughs> is there one part, of, for, for final question, is there one part of your show this year that you're, you're really looking forward to? Yes, I'm doing a, a, a knife-throwing act, and I cannot wait. It's going to be a, an unsuspecting unsus uh, participant in the audience, and I just can't wait to get somebody up there and kill them. I mean, uh, um, <laughs> practice my knife act with them, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just practicing. I'm brand new at this, so hopefully it'll go well. Well, thank you very much, yeah. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. You're welcome. Now, if I had known we were going to talk with Elvira, I would have watched Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, the film that came out in 1985. Yeah, I never saw it either. No, need, 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 neither did I. <laughs> and judging by our questions, <laughs> it was very apparent. Yeah. But thank you to Elvira and thank you to her handlers who said we have five minutes. We yes. took advantage of that. Oh, she was sitting on this chase lounge. Do you oh, remember yeah. that? Oh, yeah. yeah, she was like all spread out. Her her dress was like just so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Whenever you see promo pics of Elvira, that's how she was sitting. Yeah. <laughs> I think she needed like three handlers just to get up. <laughs> now, Sarah, what are you going to be for Halloween this year? Halloween? Mm -hmm. Are we going out for Halloween this year? Yeah, we are going to walk the neighborhood. Oh. So, so what do you, you want to dress up? Last year... You were Tinkerbell, I was Iron Man, yeah. and we walked down to this this party happening at, at, in the Long Beach Park, and we walked in, and little did we know, it was a whole a Marvel Disney theme, so everyone thought, like, we belong there? Yeah. <laughs> we thought, yeah. like, oh, okay, these are the guest stars, here we are. Yeah, because all the kids were dressed up, but none of the adults were except for us, and you had on your, like, primo Iron Man costume, too. Mm -hmm. Looked like the real thing. Which which garnered a lot of candy afterwards. Yeah. Because yeah. it was in a very nice residential area. It's like, hey, we're here, let's, let's go truck or treating. Yeah. And people come to the door, they look at you, and but before they figure out that you're over the age of six, they've already given you the candy. It's true. So, you know, thank you very much. I'll be on my way. I'll see you next year. So, what are you, you going to be? I think I want to put on every piece of Baby Yoda thing I have <laughs> and just wander around like that because Baby Yoda is fun. And I want to spread joy. Okay. I'm going to dig out my old Tusken Raider costume. Whoa. But you <laughs> yes. can't fit in that, can you? The one from 1981. I got, I have the burlap, I've, I've got the, the mask, the, the, the Don Post mask and the burlap robe that my grandmother made. And the rest were just... We're just pieces of cardboard, so you know, I'll have to remake those. They've deteriorated. Mm -hmm. so maybe I'll, I'll see if I can dig that out. Now, I know for the rest of you, it's getting down to the wire, and I hope everyone has already picked their Halloween costume. But if you need help picking out your costume for this year, well, don't worry. C-3PO is here to help you. Who should I be this year? Mickey. Donald, perhaps Goofy, yes Artu, you are so right, maybe something closer to home, something like Iron Man. Oh, hello, I am C-3PO, and this is my counterpart, R2-D2. We are here once again at Skywalking Through Neverland to bring you some more important Halloween safety advice. Today, we will look at selecting an appropriate and safe costume. Firstly, plan a costume that is bright and reflective for greater visibility. Make sure your costume is short enough to prevent tripping, entanglement, or contact with flame. Please obtain a flashlight with fresh batteries to safely travel in the night. Glow sticks may also be an option. Because masks and helmets can limit or even block eyesight, just ask any of those dreaded Imperial Stormtroopers. Consider non-toxic makeup and decorative hats as safer alternatives. Yes, Artu, I'm sure they do them in your size. If a lightsaber, vibro-axe or electro-staff is a part of your costume, Make sure it is not too sharp or long. You may be easily hurt by these accessories if you stumble or happen to trip. You may even lose a hand. <laughs> Poor Master Luke. Oh dear. Well, Artu, I think that about covers everything. 
Join myself and Artu next week for some more Halloween safety advice brought to you from Skywalking Through Neverland and the American Academy of Pediatrics. We encourage all you Skywalkers to send us pictures of your costumes for all to enjoy. You can send them to share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com, facebook.com slash skywalkingthroughneverland, or tweet them at skywalkingpod. Now Artu wants me to remind you about the most important safety tip of all. You stepped on my line. I was supposed to say, never land on Alderaan. You mindless philosopher, why I choose to degrade myself working with a glorified plumber is beyond my programming. Tell him no more of it. All right, Skywalkers, it's now time to talk Halloween. We have lots of questions, and you had lots and lots of great answers. Answers that we just want to share with everybody else. And while you're listening, you can be thinking about your answers, too. And you can even share that with us on social media. Yeah. All right. So once again, I started this Halloween countdown on my Facebook page. It's Halloween countdown, 31 days, 30 days, and 29 days, and so on and so forth. And posted a, a random question, and wow, the overwhelming responses were were fantastic. I posted this in other Facebook Halloween groups as well, but for right now, we're just going to focus on the Skywalkers. Excellent. Like we always do. We're just going to focus on you Skywalkers. Yay. Well, all right, so... So one of the first questions was asking everyone to post a favorite Halloween costume. And boy, did ya. Boy, did ya. The Turkels posted one where their uh, Kelly was an evil queen and Courtney was the Mad Hatter. Oh, some evil blood in those sisters, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think they, they were at Disney as they were at Disney when they took that picture. Too. Oh, like the Oogie Boogie Bash, probably. No, or they were one on of those? Main Street. So oh, okay. It must have been a past Mickey's Halloween, not, not so scary Halloween party. Right. Right. All right. We also had Joey Pittman. He posted a picture as Jack Sparrow. Super cool. Yeah, Michael Coat. He posted a pic of himself in a 1976 Ben Cooper Bionic Man costume. <laughs> Nice. Really, really funny because I didn't know this existed. <laughs> wow, and you love Ben Cooper hey, stuff. I know, I know. All right, now Courtney says she was Queen of Hearts at the Oogie Boogie Bash. Right. Yes. Right, okay. Super cool. All right, and also Shamim Dana, he posted a picture as him as Vader and as Captain Hook. Lots of lots of uh, evil, evil characters here. It's, it's Halloween. Dark side characters. Yeah, you gotta be evil. You gotta well, be on the dark side, except for the bionic man. Okay. I have a different answer. Well, let's hear it. Okay. Well, so I thought this question was asking, like, what is a favorite costume from your past? Mm -hmm. And so for me, now, I don't know if I ever wore this as a Halloween costume, but... I had Superman PJs with a cape as a kid, and I loved those things, and I wore them all the time, and I, my parents will have to verify, did I ever wear them for Halloween? So that's my answer as to my favorite outfit. However, I know I wore this at Halloween, was Mary Poppins Jolly Holiday outfit that my mom made from my, was it, uh, first communion dress? And, and cause it has to be white. And then she made the red cummerbund and the little hat. And I, I didn't want to be Mary Poppins, her boring, you know, coat outfit that she comes in. I wanted to be the Jolly Holiday pretty white and red one. <laughs> okay. Great. Great. Yeah. Did you ever wear your Superman cape, then put a jacket over it? Heck no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, living in Boston, it was really cold. So uh. we had to wear jackets with the cape. Underneath, and it looked really funny, and everyone thought I was wearing a dress when I was Batman. Oh, uh, no. So I've actually experienced that. It got pretty cold in Austin, Texas, sometimes on Halloween. And I wore, I remember wearing a black turtleneck under like a cat costume or something. Like she bundled me up underneath, <laughs> but not, not in, in front. Yeah. Now, around 1980 is when I started growing out of the Ben Cooper costumes and had to make my own costumes, which was fine because at that point, you went from the Ben Cooper costumes to the Don Post masks oh. and you built the rest of the costume. Right. So in 1980, 
I was Darth Vader, built my own Darth Vader costume out of cardboard. It was great in the daytime, but at night, I couldn't see a thing. I was walking into everything. It was a great Halloween, but yet a very bad Halloween Aww. because I couldn't see a thing the whole night, but I was so committed to being Darth Vader, I would not take off the helmet. Right. My friend's like, Rich, you're, you're really slowing us down. We could have had two bags, two pillowcases full of candy, but yet we have three Snicker bars, and that's it. I know this feeling. <laughs> well, what does that mean? It's just that you like to do your thing, and it, it's okay. I, I'm committed, okay? I know, I know. Then, it's all right. <laughs> for this post, I had picked, I had posted a picture of me as the Tuscan Raider, and I love this costume. I spent all summer making it, but that morning... Lisa, my sister, and I got into a, a a fight, and she kicked me in the stomach, and I was just... Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I was hurling all day oh, long. That's so awful. So I think I wore the costume for about five minutes. Oh. I think the the picture you see is the only time I, you wore I fully wore that costume. Right. And believe me, she's never heard the end of it. So I'm trying to think if I was ever evil, and I know I was like a witch a couple times, but that's not really, I mean, it was a generic witch. It wasn't anything evil per se, but we do have some Skywalker comments here uh, that Kelly says that being evil is better. I see. On I Halloween, see. yeah, you got more candy that way. And and uh, Kelly also says that she wore a purple sweatshirt over her I Dream of Genie <laughs> costume. Yeah. Kind of How takes, sad. Takes away from it. I know. I'm sure your hair looked amazing, though. Makeup. But with, with most kids, when your parents say, wear a jacket, it's like, okay. And then you're three steps out of the house and you're ditching the jacket. Oh, and yeah. Whoosh. Oh, yeah. Courtney says, I was Eliza Doolittle once and everyone at school thought I was Mary Poppins. Aww. Yeah, I remember our class, we were all reading the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory book in my, like, talented and gifted class, whatever. And so we all had to come as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, like, people. And I wanted to be Charlie. So I dressed as Charlie, even though as a girl. I always wanted to be like the boy characters. <laughs> Superman, Charlie. You are way ahead of your time. It's true. Now, who is... Eliza Doolittle? Oh, she's from uh, My Fair Lady. Oh, yeah. okay. She's the main well, one. I can kind of see that. Yeah. yeah, if you didn't have Rex Harrison guy, uh, I forget who that guy is he plays, but that's the main guy who teaches her. But yeah, Eliza Doolittle, she's English. It's And honestly, those two actresses got um, cast one for the other sometimes. Julie Andrews and, and Audrey Hepburn. There you go. Now, All right. Lisa, is this you as Facebook user? Is this you right over here? Because if it is, you got a lot to answer for. <laughs> Do you recall Halloween 1981 when you kicked me in the stomach? <gasps> yeah, I haven't forgotten about that either. Oh. Christopher Marino says, I was a zombie soldier and got caught by the police in a cemetery. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, a California raisin. Hold on. Hold on. Joshua Jordan says he was dressed as a California raisin. <laughs> Did you have a loop of that song playing? <laughs> the the grapevine? Yeah. Heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> you know what? In, in like 1988, 1989, if you had a trash bag, you had a costume. You were a raisin. <laughs> That's awful. Make Halloween fun with one-stop shopping at Woolworth or Woolco for your Halloween needs. Costumes from $1.83 to $3.99, like Six Million Dollar Man, Bionic Woman, Superheroes, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, and a new favorite for girls, Holly Hobby. You can get wrapped candies of every kind, bubblegum, lollipops, fun-size candy bars. Get this Halloween record, sounds to make you shiver just $1.89. Make Halloween fun and easy. Make just one stop at Woolworth or Woolco. All right, let's go ahead and move on to okay. a, another another question that got loads and loads. I'm still getting responses. comments and responses from this question about what is your favorite monster cereal? Oh. <laughs> now, okay. my favorite is Count Chocula. No, that's my favorite. Well... Look, no. We're on the same page. No, it's my, ha, no. On the same, you it's know gotta what? be my favorite. I went so far in 1979, I went out trick-or-treating half the time as Count Chocula because they had a mail-away offer with the monster cereals. You can get a full costume. Really? So I, was, I was Count Chocula, and then the second half of the night, I was Boba Fett. 
Wow. Mm-hmm. That's so cute. Okay. okay. The chocolate has been dropped. Okay. Beat that. All right. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Without oh. a doubt, Frankenberry says Pierre Kelly. Oh, Pierre Kelly, you're gonna want to hang around later on. Wow. All right, Chuck. Frank, they're all really good. Frankenberry, fantastic. It's too fruity. I don't like fruity cereal. Okay. But that's okay. Some people like it. All right. All right. Chuck Couch, Captain Crunch. It ripped your mouth up. <laughs> right. now, was that Captain doesn't really Crunch... qualify. No, okay. I was going to okay. say. For the monster cereals, okay. you had Frankenberry. That was a strawberry. You had Count Chocula. That chocolate. was chocolate. You had Booberry, which was blueberry. Okay. Oh, that was so good. You had Yummy Mummy. I don't remember that. It, what was what? that? I'm not really sure what flavor that was. That and Fruit Brute. And Fruit Brute was like tricks. It was a, oh. a bunch of artificial Ugh. fruit flavors. No, no one really bought these because we were also committed to the top three. Oh, okay. So Fruit Brute and the Yummy Mummy, they yeah, paled in comparison. Oh, okay, because the others had already been established. Yeah, yeah. So You're they already tried, your favorites. Yeah, so they tried to expand the universe. Okay. And the Monster Cereal lovers said, mm-mm. They nope. missed the boat because if they had added a peanut butter cereal, I'm sure that would have shot up. Everyone loves peanut butter. Like, you know, the... Is it Captain Crunch that is the peanut butter ones? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I ate those by the barrel. Oh, yeah. Holes. Those are so good. But what okay. monster could you associate with the peanut butter cereal? Like, I'm thinking like a scarecrow, like a scary scarecrow. That might be good. Or like a, well, yeah, I don't know. Huh. I like a scarecrow. All right. Okay. Let's see our Skywalkers who are alive. Marino says fruit brute because it was impossible to find. Okay. And the, 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 the character for Fruit Brute was a werewolf. Oh, fun! So I I wanted to like it, but it's like you know what? I'll just go have some tricks. You guys, you guys aren't even trying over there. Right, right. Let's see. Kai has two Frankenberry, <laughs> and she liked the Yummy Mummy. All right, Kai. What flavor was the Yummy Mummy? Yeah, let us know. I don't think I've ever had Yummy Mummy. Oh, I I definitely haven't. I think I've only had Count Chocolate, or I think I've only had these when you, you know, they came out again, right? right. And they only and you had, bought them again. Yeah. Every year at Target, they'll go back in the back of the warehouse, bring out the, this very old and very stale monster cereal. Wow. And sell it to people like me. Now, in the, in the Facebook post, let's read this one by Hunter Goatley. And he says, they've changed the formula so many times over the years that Count Chocula is the only one that is still edible. Well, edible, that's, that's debatable. <laughs> I was never a big fan of Yummy Mummy or Fruit Brute, but loved the other three in the 70s. While none of them taste the same as they used to, Count Chocula is the only one that still comes close. Now, I'm wondering, Hunter, is... Has the formula changed for them, or have your taste buds changed? Yeah, I'm going to guess maybe your taste buds yeah, changed. Yeah, that's what I think. We, we've had them, and they've tasted the same. I a, mean... A little bit more stale. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Chuck Coach says, creepy creature crunch. Huh. Creepy creature crunch. Is that for peanut butter? Like a... Like a Ooh. Oh, maybe like a creature from the Black Lagoon? Eh, that, that, that oh. But that, that doesn't really go well with a peanut butter. I, I think that would be cool. I'm going back to the scarecrow. because All right. Aren't peanuts grown in the field? I don't know. But <laughs> or by Ka trees? I don't know. Kai says Yummy Mummy is like Fruit Loops. But Fruit Brute... Wait a minute. Fruit Brute was like Fruit Loops. All right. Someone help us out here. <laughs> if only we had the technology. All right, Scott Sutton says, last time I had any of them, they weren't as good as when I was a kid. I think we're, we're hitting on something here. Yeah. When you're a kid, everything tastes good. So I'm going with none of them. Mm. Okay. Denise Power says, can't vote. Missed out on all of these. I was always a cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs girl. <laughs> Ooh, Rebecca says, my mom never let me have sugar cereal. It was Cheerios or nothing. Oh, you know what? Let's let's send a big box, a big multi-pack box of all these cereals to Rebecca Pripke. All right? Coming at you. Okay. All right. So, Kai, we know that Yummy Mummy was like the fruity pebbles, the fruit, the the tricks, but the Yummy... Oh, that was the fruit fruit. See, now, now I'm getting all confused. Yeah, okay. All right. We're not getting anywhere with these. Yeah. Okay. Paul Hoffman says, my childhood favorite was Frankenberry until... I discovered Booberry. Oh. Booberry was, I think that's like 
neck and neck with Count Chocula. Okay, so Jason Roberts says Wheaties. That's his favorite Halloween cereal because he goes on, trust me, my mom gave that to me as a kid because it was healthy. When she left the room, I put a ton of sugar on it and turned into a monster. (laughs) Nice. That's what sugar does. (laughs) Wait, Yummy Mummy, this just in. Yummy Mummy had marshmallows, says Kelly. But was it fruity and had marshmallows? I don't know. I never ate these. You think we would have done this research? I don't know. But, you know, should, should we move on? Okay, to another couple of comments. If you'd like. Okay, let's let's wrap this up with Ronnie Kuhn, who's pretty much echoing everything we've said. I recall them all except the mummy, yummy mummy, and fruit brute. Where the heck have I been? <laughs> well, if you blinked in the 70s, early 80s, you, well, you would have missed them. All right, hold on. Your mom says regarding <laughs> peanuts. <laughs> this just in. <laughs> peanuts grow beneath the soil and not on trees like other nutta. <laughs> like other nuts. <laughs> okay, so you know what? We're going with that with a field kind of vibe from these this new peanut butter monster cereal. So in a field, you get what? Say it. A scarecrow. Let's move on. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Someone's come for a nutritious breakfast. What? Hello, my name is Boo. <laughs> Let me finish. Booberry. My ghostly good blueberry flavored cereal, Booberry, <laughs> is part of this complete breakfast. Frankenberry's got strawberry flavored marshmallows. Count Chocula's got chocolate marshmallows. But I've got blueberry flavored marshmallows. Frankenberry. Count Chocula. (laughs) And blueberry. (laughs) What has been the one candy you got while trick or treating that you couldn't wait to scarf down? And the candy you immediately threw away before leaving the trick or treaties yard? Or if you were smart, you kept it so you could trade later. This is very important. Some candy you could you couldn't even give away. So Sarah, let's let's start with you with this one. Oh, okay. So top top was the Reese's peanut butter cup. Quite possibly the most perfect candy. It's it's perfect, but the the long flat ones, right? Not the little baby ones, but the flat, the long. Oh, so good. They weren't flat. You mean like the little cu- the cups, the peanut butter cups, the, the peanut butter cups that that are you know like this size. Yeah. Not not the tiny, not the tiny ones. Oh, okay, like those uh, Pe- aluminum foil, yeah, those, the aluminum those, those, those foil, foil wrapped, exactly. Little, oh yeah, the, the, not those. Yeah. No, Th- those ain't no. The ratio to peanut butter and chocolate was perfect, and beyond that, I pretty much loved anything with chocolate. So like Nestle's Crunch was probably my number two, and Nestle Crunch, Nestle Crunch, yeah. Okay, and that was my number two. And and then yeah, followed by I don't know something anything without caramel. So yeah, ever try to make your own Reese's peanut butter cups and get like a Hershey's bar and dump it in peanut butter? Never tasted the oh, same. Oh no, no, you but have to have it. I'm gonna echo you with the peanut butter cups. Loved those. Mm-hmm. Loved those. Loved Almond Joy. I loved Snickers, Three Musketeer, Nestle bar. When you found a neighbor. That give away the actual oh. king size bars, or just the regular size, well, bars. or the regular size bars. But every once in a while, you get the neighbor who's giving away the king size bar. Holy buckets! Yeah, you come back the next day and like mow her lawn. Yeah, the trash. Oh my gosh! Just, just, just as a thank you. Yes. So those are the ones we liked. But how about the ones we didn't like? Mary Jane's. And Tootsie Rolls, those oh. little hard candies where Tootsie you rolls. tried to unwrap it and most of the wrapper would not come off. Oh, yeah. You had to let it soak off in your mouth and then spit it out. I, I hated Smarties. And luckily, my friend, my best friend at the time, she loved Smarties. So I would trade her the peanut butter cups for the Smarties and I would feel like I made out, man. On my Halloween night, we would dump all our candy on the floor Right? Mm-hmm. In our pile, and mm-hmm. you start sorting, and you're like, okay, here you go. Here's all my Smarties. Okay, let's take all your peanut butter cups. That's always a fun fun tradition. It is. It's the with, best. With me, it was between me and my sister, dump out all the candy. First, we'd see who, who would get more. Yeah. Most times, I'd get more because she'd peter out after about 45 minutes. Oh, my. I'd go the whole night. Oh, yeah. So I had this huge, like, close encounters m- mountain of candy. Yes. And then you take it to school, you'd barter with it. 
Oh yeah, you, you could you could control your friends and other classmates with it. Say, hey, oh. you know what? I'll I'll give you a, a a fun size Snicker bar if you throw this spitball at the teacher. Not saying I did that. Or maybe I did. I don't know. <laughs> so I would have others do my my dirty work. All right. Yeah. Let's Kai Charles. Comments. Kai Charles says full size Snickers were golden when I was a kid. We lived a few blocks from some rich neighbors who loved Halloween. I always got rid of the Smarties. High five. Whoosh. Yep. Nice. Courtney says, love Twix. Hate Almond Joys and Mounds. Okay, Courtney, I will be trading you. I will take your Almond Joys and your Mounds. I love those things. How, how could you How could you hate Almond Joys? I, I, well, and she mounds. obviously doesn't like coconut. coconut. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Chuck says, worst was the wax <laughs> lips. Yes. Were those even... Edible? Were they supposed to be edible? I guess so. Those the wax lips and the the wax harmonica. Oh, I remember getting a few of those. I'm like, what is this? Yeah, you would chew it, and you're confused. Do I do I swallow this? I don't want to swallow it. Please don't make me swallow this. Yeah, it's awful. Oh, I wonder if they still make those. I don't know. All right, should we read some yeah. comments from our Facebook group? Okay, my sister says no raisinets. WTF. <laughs> She doesn't like raisinets? What's wrong with raisinets? Oh, they're so good. Yeah. Denise Power says, best scarf down candy, Hershey's milk chocolate, or almond joy. Ah. Oh, Denise, go and see Courtney. The gross out candy, anything licorice. Ooh, she feels the same way as Jason Roberts here. He says that he threw out the black licorice while in that person's yard, not tradable. <laughs> you, you would do that if you got like those little, those little... Mary Jane's, which... What are you talking about? What are like those? These little, little, tiny, like Tootsie Rolls, in that same size, and that same kind of wrapper, and it tasted a little nutty, a little caramel. Yeah, there was nothing enjoyable about these things. Hmm. So when you got them, when you, as you're leaving the yard, you just throw them in the bushes. Because you're just going to throw them away at home. So why weight down your Halloween bag with the with these this god-awful candy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see it. Right. Oh, yes. My mom loves Almond Joys. All right. Chuck Couch uh, in the chat says, the bag of pennies. Bag of pennies? Yeah, I had like a Like an actual neighbor, bag of pennies? Yeah, I had a neighbor who would give away, like, like cents, change. Yeah, one of my neighbors used to get drunk every Halloween and would give away <laughs> actual bills. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, she did. Wow. All right. Now, Lori Seitz, who I went to school with back in 1970s. Uh, she says it used to be Reese's or Mounds, but now it's Sour Patch Kids. So are those guess, her favorite? I'm, guess, I'm guessing those are her favorites. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't talked to her in 40 years, so I don't know. Oh, now, Jonathan, Maraquin is very enterprising. He says Hershey's is his favorite. All the rest, I usually traded away or sold to the rest of my family each year. <laughs> Jonathan, you what know, did your family let you get away with? You know what? If you want the goods, you got to pay for the goods. So you got them for free. You trade them for like favors or something. <laughs> I don't know. Or or cold hard cash. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I think that's funny. If they're if they're willing to pay, then then you can't blame him. Okay. All right. It's not like he's overcharging them. That never occurred to me. I don't know. <laughs> Michelle Kaya says, I go for the three musketeers immediately. I haven't had one of these in years. Oh, they're good. Then I throw away the almond joys and the mounds. Why? How sad. Why? Yeah. Joey Pittman, he loves Snickers and Reese's, always for the win, he says. Eric, and Smarties. And Smarties? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong thing. Yeah. Eric Unkenhout <laughs> says, I love Smarties. You know what? You read this one. Okay. You, you're already halfway there. All right, Eric Unkenhout says, I love Smarties, Snickers, and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and Twix. Never been a fan of Milky Way. Now, that's interesting because a lot of the same stuff is in a Milky Way, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's because Milky Way is a little bit more gooier than a Snickers bar. Okay. It, Maybe or... he doesn't like the texture. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. I do okay. recall those being the, out of all the big, the, the big candies, that was like on the bottom of the list. Okay. The chocolate was really good, but just you know, once that that <gasps> caramel dripped on you, it's like staining your clothes. You know what? No one has mentioned yet. Kit Kats. I loved Kit Kats. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Shamim oh. Dana. Shamim Dana says mine is Kit Kats. Oh, Hershey's Cr Hershey's Crunch, Twix, M and M, 
Candy corn. <gasps> Candy corn. Shamim, you're a man after my own heart. Yep. Baby Ruth's. Bubble gum and dum dums and lollipops. I guess I think those are the those bad are the ones. ones he didn't like. Yeah, yeah. Getting gum on on oh, Halloween. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not a treat. Remember the dum dum lollipops? Those are stupid. Those are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Couch says big league chew. Oh god, those are awful. I never had yeah. big league chew. Anything with that was like too chewy or like the laffy taffy. Anything like that, I just didn't like them. Blech. Oh, butter fingers are so good too. No one mentioned though. Okay, Richard, what are we doing after this? Gotta go down to Ralph's <laughs> and get a watch him call it. <laughs> oh yeah, what what? what that was like chocolate and peanut crunchy peanut. What's my call it? Crunchy, pe- oh, yeah. Like crunchy peanut butter. That was like the big joke in like the early eighties. What is it? It's a what's my call it? But what is it? It's like who's on first? Right, right. Yeah, that right. joke lasted about thirty seconds, and then you hit the other person. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Kelly Turkell says Tootsie Rolls, Skittles, peanut butter cups were my favorites. Tootsie Rolls? She gave away the Smarties and the Nikos. Remember those stupid wafers, those yeah. Nico wafers? But yeah. hold on, hold on. I think we're, we're glossing she over this. She likes Tootsie Rolls? She likes... No one likes Tootsie Rolls. Uh, uh, Not on Halloween. What about Jolly Ranchers? Ugh. Now, I would trade away all the Jolly Ranchers except Ugh. for the Sour Apple. Sour Apple, I liked. Just just saying that, I go... That's why I like Apple Teenies. It's like the same flavor. <laughs> Hey, you and JD. <laughs> yes. All right. Kelly, for the next Neverland Clubhouse podcast, we're going to be talking about Tootsie Rolls. I know it'll be after Halloween, but that's yeah, that's going to be the topic of your next podcast. All right. So oh, you wait. Know, oh, oh, hold on. Oh. Okay, one more. One more. Oh, no. Okay, Chuck's got another good one. Chuck Couch in the chat says. Hold on. Oh, what about those little wax bottles with liquid in them? Yuck. Do you yeah. recall those? Oh, yeah. Oh, you had like. Like a millimeter of, like like a sour sugar, apple, no or, sugar water. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, like grape cherry or peach. Oh yeah, it was gross. But then you would you the idea was you would drink the liquid and then eat the wax. Oh, I think there's a couple of people in a boardroom going, "What's the most disgusting thing we can come up with?" And we'll see if kids will eat it. Yep. That's cheap to make. Yes. Because that's the thing. Yes. Yeah. And they said, you know what? No one's ever going to eat or drink liquid out of a wax little bottle. No one's going to. Well, there you go. Someone lost a bet. Okay. So Amanda's very picky. She threw away her Almond Joys, Mounds, Malt Balls, Mr. Good Bars, uh, Kit this, Kats. This must be a typo. Nestle Crunch and Peanut M&M. <gasps> you, you don't throw away Malt Balls. You, no. you don't throw... Mr. Good Bar? Those were good. Ne- okay, there this there must be a typo in there. Because she's throwing away all her good stuff. I know. And she's keeping candy corn, dum-dums, Tootsie Rolls. Sour Patch. And, Skittles. And a wrapped apple. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, oh that's but, so okay, well, fun. But she really actually does say, I might eventually eat the Smarties, candy corn, Twix, Snickers, Butterfingers, etc. But every year, about 75% of my candy, I would eventually just throw out. Hmm. I much prefer baked goods or ice cream for something sweet. Okay, Amanda. All right. That's how you can tell me and Jonathan Marquin are related because I would bring the candy to school. Like I said earlier, I'd, I'd use it as currency. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You, you want another Twix? Well, you know what? Sneak me another one of those hot meals and you can have one. So I think I think we've been talking candy for about 15 minutes. So now... Not long enough. We well, have seven hours, don't we? No, no, no. So I think let's move on to the spookier part Ooh. of Halloween. Anything could happen tonight with Mickey Mouse and M&M's candies. Everything's oh. going to be just right. Come on, A special go. time for fun and M&M's for Mickey Mouse. Yeah. And friends, the magic never ends. <laughs> So how about this? What has been your favorite or scariest or most unsettling haunted house memory from when you were a kid? See, I think I was just stalling because I didn't want to get here. So Richard, you go first. Okay. Asps. Very dangerous. You go first. <laughs> so at this at this haunted house that I keep talking about nonstop where there was a Tuscan Raider and Jawas at the very end, at the very beginning... There was this little tableau. You'd walk up the stairs and there'd be a, 
a person in a duck mask, like a, 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 a widower. And next to her was a coffin. And inside the coffin was her duck husband. And here she is. She's crying over her duck husband. Oh. This was always so freaky to me. Because what? how did the duck husband die? And how are you a person? Are you a duck? What are you? And this is right when Disco Duck was just sweeping the billboard charts. Okay. <laughs> the Rick D's novelty song. Uh-huh. So you're thinking Disco Duck, you're very happy. But now... That disco duck is dead. Well, okay, I guess they were making a statement. Disco is dead. Disco oh. duck is dead. I'm just putting this together right now. Okay. Okay, so that was someone's commentary <laughs> on disco. And it freaked and, you and out. That, and, and that ridiculous song. But knowing that there were going to be a Tuscan Raider and Jawas at the end, I would just run, run. I would, I would make... Everyone else moved to the side. I'm like eight years old. Can you please move to the side? I would dart up those stairs and just, I would round that corner like I was on rails and just run right past them. Now, how often would you go in this hall? Is this like year, year oh, after I year? I went to this haunted house. I'm like, f- I'm thinking five times that year. Okay. Now, it may have been just that once, but after, you know, 43 years, something, something slip. <laughs> Oh, wow, Jason Roberts says he had Disco Duck on a 45. <laughs> nice. Oh, once you start singing this song, that's it. It's like that sh- Silver Shamrock song. Oh, no. <laughs> So, yeah, that to me was the scariest thing I've ever seen in a haunted house. Okay. All right, Sarah, what about you? So, I don't really remember frequenting a lot of haunted houses. And I asked my parents about this. I did some research. And, yeah, beyond, like, some 3M Halloween parties, we never really... Like, in Austin, Texas, it wasn't a big deal, like, when how we go to, like, Not Scary Farm and things now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I don't really have any haunted house memories so i can't contribute but we do have lots of comments here okay from our skywalkers all right all right kelly turkel she weighs in on behalf of courtney she says i have never been to a haunted house as i don't like to be scared however courtney did get chased around by a guy with a chainsaw outside of a restaurant once oh and this was in june Uh, uh, but courtney adds to that and says yeah they never went into the restaurant but the guy was chasing a girl who just got out of a maze next door and he's decided to go after me we were just walking by on our way to the car from the restaurant never went in a haunted house again they were traumatized yeah when those guys come racing at you with a a buzzing chainsaw that smells like oil and gas Uh, i hate the smell more than well i hate the noise who am i kidding (laughs) Loud. <laughs> Jonathan Marquin says, in a neighborhood nearby, there's this guy who stands still and then chases kids with a chainsaw. What's it with chainsaws? Whenever they get close enough, that dude was weird. <laughs> I guess after a chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that was like the weapon of choice. Okay. But of course, they're not real chainsaws. They're just loud. They ha- yeah, they don't have the chain in them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, this, by the way, is one of my greatest Halloween jobs. When you could stand still outside someone's house, and as they walked by, you'd go, Bleh! And, and, they'd, scare and they'd freak out. Yeah. I had many a jobs like that, and I loved it, but there's an art to it. Like, if you watch America's Funniest Home Videos, you'll see a lot of videos of people on porches getting slugged in the face because they they didn't time it properly. Right. So now you're going to scare someone when they're out of, out of arm's reach. Right. So if they do try to swing... It's you a have, swing and a miss. You have time. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, it, there's an art to that, <laughs> or just be ready. You know, they're they're close enough, and you and you they're looking at you, going, "Hey, I wonder if this is real." That's your moment right there to go. Bleh! You gotta be ready. You gotta be ready to, to block anything that comes your way. Okay. Because a couple of times people have wound up like, "Yeah, huh." Ah. Scary. Yeah, the fight or flight response. Yeah. And they they have the fight response. <laughs> oh, Megan says her dad did. Did that in front of their house for several years. Oh. So he would scare people. Yeah, it's so much fun. Yeah. 
All right. Chuck Couch says, I worked in a haunted, ho- I worked in a haunted house once part time in St. Louis and was in the exorcist room for six hours. Still haunts me. <laughs> wow. Denise Power says, one Halloween, I went with a group to a huge haunted house. There was a room full of creepy asylum zombie type characters with flashing strobe lights. It was so freaky that everyone ran screaming toward the door only to be met by a wolf man in the tree just outside. The crowd came to a screeching halt in front of me and I was shoved hard from behind, forcing my head to slam into the head in front of me. Oh, no. Oh, no. I thought I was going to pass out and zombies were hovering over me trying to trying to aid me. Oh, it was no. horrible. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Okay, back to the whole punching thing. David Braun says, My friend was never a scary movie haunted house kind of person. A group of us went to a haunted trail, and he went with us. A guy in a wolfman mask spooked him, and my friend almost knocked the wolfman out with a right hook. We were kicked out and decided to do some less scary stuff the rest of the night. Oh, whoops. <laughs> okay, now I need to share my, my red button story again. Oh. Yeah, in brief, the whole red button thing came about when me and ghost host Dave Scale went to Not Scary Farm and there was a maze and we didn't know the way in because there was so much rolling fog. We thought, oh, we think we see an entrance right over here. So we went in that way and there were employees outside. So we figured if we, this must be the right way because they're not stopping us. So, okay, this is it. Telling us, go this way. So we're walking in. It's like, this is a haunted house. It's it's wooden planks. Nothing haunted about this. But the end of this walkway, there was a big red button. What do you do when you see a red button? You push the big red button. Except not anymore. No, hold on. No. <laughs> not anymore, you don't. And, and this was the emergency shutoff button. So all the lights in this maze went on and everything shut down. All the spooky sounds shut down and all the animatronics shut down. And we see guards running toward us. Like, is this still part of it? And they're yelling at us. Like, at this point, we're getting the feeling that, okay, something's wrong here. We don't know. We don't really know what. And these guards are saying, why did you do this? We're in our, like, 40s at the time. Really? Do we seem like kids who would be pressing buttons for no reason or doing these kind of shenanigans? So here we are, you screaming at these security guards saying, hey, you guys were right outside. You watched us come in. You, you should have stopped us. And let's, let's maybe uh, put the brakes on the rolling fog, okay? Because obviously we went in the wrong way. So really, this is all on you. And as we're walking out, we've all these people in costumes yelling at us, hey, they're those idiots who, who turned off the, the ride. Now we're yelling at the zombies. We're going back and forth. Huh. So from then on, whenever I see a big red button, I've got to push it. Yes. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> okay. One of my scariest times of like, let's say, a not scary farm maze. Oh, okay. Is the London fog maze. Do you remember this maze? It was oh. like the streets of London and we were going across this like bridge and all of a sudden something reached out from like under the bridge and grabbed my ankles and it was so freaky. It was like, oh, that, that was like so creepy out of the fog. Ugh. So now whenever Sarah does those haunted mazes, she's like, she does it by parkour. She jumps from <laughs> from uh, level to level, never touching the floor. Yeah. You ought, to, you ought to see her. You think they got mad at me for pushing a red button? They get really mad at her for jumping on caskets and coffins. It's true. Mm-hmm. Kelly says, no more pushing red buttons, Richard. <laughs> I can't help it. It's a sickness. <laughs> There's a vacancy at the Bates Motel. Norman, is that you? No, it's Spuds McKenzie, and it could be you. Look for this display and enter Bud Light Psycho Sweepstakes. Go win a Bud Light party with Spuds McKenzie at the Psycho Mansion. You could even get a mug like Spuds at participating retailers. Wow! That Spuds is so cool, it's scary. All right, moving right along. Who would be the four representatives on your Mount Rushmore of Halloween. It can be fictional characters, authors, actors, etc. All right, so here we have the Mount Rushmore. Who are the four 
four figureheads that would represent Halloween. I thought this was a really cool question. And I had to, this is a thinker. It was. It's because there's there's so many choices. There really is. All right. Courtney Turkell says, oh, she's got some good choices there. Ghostface from Scream. Okay. Billy Butcherson from Hocus Pocus. Wednesday Adams from Adams Family and Beetlejuice. Nice. That's a very, very good Mount Rushmore. Now, Rebecca has a different answer. And she says, Vincent Price, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. And Cassandra Peterson. Now, is Cassandra Peterson, she's Elvira? She's Elvira, yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So, so Rebecca Pripke, another another great answer there. Yeah. Okay, someone needs to sculpt this. (sighs) All right. Alan Sanborn says, my own personal top four would be the Grim Reaper, the Headless Horseman, who would be holding his jack-o'-lantern head, Jack of the Lantern, I guess that's just the big pumpkin. And perhaps the Wicked Witch of the West. Although it would be kind of hard to sculpt the Invisible Man. (laughs) Nice. But I really love this one. Cool. All right. Let's see. There's others here. Denise Power says the Bride of Frankenstein. Morticia Adams. Baby Jane. I I hate those candies. I really do. Oh, she's talking about the movie. Okay. And then, and Witchy What's, Poo. What's Witchy Poo? Witchy Poo is from H.R. Puffin Stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, I know. Oh, there you That's, okay, you know what? Forget everybody else. Just put up Witchy Poo. That's all <laughs> you need. All right. Jim Pruey says, my Mount Rushmore of Halloween is Reagan from The Exorcist, The Toxic Avenger, <laughs> Countdown, played by Harry Nelson and Cousin It. All right. I know three of those four. Huh. All right, Sarah, who who is going to be on your Mount ha- Halloween Mount Rushmore? Okay, so this is interesting because I was trying to think back to childhood again and I, we weren't really into like big Halloween movies or anything like that. We never watched any horror films, stuff like that. But one thing we did do is we had a really awesome sound system in our house and our living room was like right by the the front steps, you know, like you walk in and there's the living room. So dad would open up all the windows outside and on our incredible stereo system, he'd played the Michael Jackson thriller soundtrack, Mm -hmm. like just super loud so that, you know, you hear the creaky door, you hear thriller. Yeah. You hear Vincent Price, like all the way down our neighborhood just from, you know, opening up the windows. And so Michael Jackson would have to be my top. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> in Halloween for Thriller. Sure. And then I would have to say uh, that Jack Sparrow would be my second because of Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, okay. which I love to play on okay. Halloween okay. as trick-or-treaters are coming. And then my third would be the Wicked Witch of the West. I'm melting. Uh, so that's, that's for me is my top three Halloween. Okay. What Those about you? Very, very good choices. I would go with Frankenstein. Classic, classic, iconic monster. I love the idea of the headless horseman. Yeah. And like Alan's, Alan said the same thing. He's holding his, his pumpkin head, creature from the Black Lagoon, and a Tuscan Raider. Oh, well, you had to say Tuscan Raider. Yeah. All right. One last one. Chuck Couch says, classic lineup, Frankenstein, mummy, werewolf, Dracula. Very classic. The Halloween experts at Magic Manor have everything you'll need this year, including actual character masks from famous motion pictures. And they can show you the proper application of makeup to impress that special someone. Magic Manor's professional hand-painted custom masks start as low as $2.50. This Halloween, remember Magic Manor. Wigs, masks, makeup, costumes, shockingly authentic. Magic Manor, East Wind Mall. All right, with that, let's take a quick break from our holiday, our Halloween holiday special for another C-3PO safety tip, and we will reveal the Skywalker of the Month. Okay, R2, we'll go over this one more time. Trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. No, it still doesn't make any sense. Why would anybody want to smell feet? Oh, hello, I am C-3PO, and this is my counterpart, R2-D2. 
we are here once again at Skywalking Through Neverland to bring you yet further Halloween safety advice. Today we will look at trick or treating. Personally, I would go for an oil bath. That does seem quite a treat. A parent or responsible adult should always accompany younglings on their neighbourhood rounds. If your older younglings are travelling alone, plan and review a route which is acceptable to you and agree on a specific time when they should return. Remain on well-lit streets and always use a sidewalk. If no sidewalk is available, walk or roll at the far edge of the roadway facing oncoming traffic. Only cross the street as a group and on established crosswalks. Never cross between parked cars, speeders, transports, or at driveways. Only go to homes with a porch light on, and never enter a home, car, or speeder for a treat. It could be a trick. It's a trap! Because pedestrian injuries are most common to younglings on Halloween, remind trick-or-treaters to stay in a group and communicate where they will be going. Always carry a comlink, or as they are called here, a cell phone, for quick communication. Artu, can you think of anything else? <laughs> then that should about cover it. We do sincerely hope our Halloween safety advice has been helpful. It was brought to you from Skywalking Through Neverland and the American Academy of Pediatrics. We here at Skywalking Through Neverland would be honoured to hear all about your Halloween stories. Please send us your blogs and or pictures to share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com, facebook.com slash skywalkingthroughneverland, or tweet them at skywalkingpod. So, do take good care of yourselves, and remember, never land on Alderaan, even if they do have the best candy. I knew we should have loaded up when we had the chance. Well, thank you so much, C-3PO, and I feel like we should also give a thanks to Simon Wilkie for some reason. <laughs> but now, Sarah, who is the Skywalker of the Month? Let's find out. Here's some Skywalking Through Neverland trivia for you. And the question is, who likes Skywalking trivia? His name Pierre Jason Kelly. Well, congratulations to Pierre Jason Kelly for his participation with all of our social media posts and for also being a great contender and a contributor to our Thursday night trivia games. Yay! Thank you so much, Pierre. It's been so much fun. Now, Skywalkers, if you want to become the next Skywalker of the Month, all you have to do is interact with us on social media, maybe in our Facebook group. Join us for our Thursday Night Trivia Challenges, which yeah. might be now on Friday. Yeah, and also, and also you can join us maybe on Instagram. But yeah, we just, we notice, we notice all of your social media commentary. We love it. Mm-hmm. And these jingles are composed by our podcast composer, Rob Dellinger. The, the John, John Williams, Williams of podcasting. podcasting. All right, now let's get back to our pressing Halloween questions and answer therapy group. All right, so now, what has been your favorite Halloween episode from a sitcom? I love Halloween tie-ins with anything. Yes, you especially do. Especially TV sitcoms. Oh, I love these so much. I oh, love boy. These. I bet you, you you watched a lot of these. Oh, oh yeah. yeah oh, my whole year would be, would be aimed at the Halloween week because that's when all the sitcoms would tie in all of their Halloween themes. All right. So, Sarah, yeah, give us yours. Okay. So, I was thinking about this. And once again, wasn't a big TV watcher as a kid. And I'm thinking up to date and I love Halloween episodes. But my most, like, the thing I love to watch the most at Halloween is the Dancing with the Stars Halloween episodes. So, when they do all the beautiful costumes and even the, the makeup and everything and everything's themed to Halloween, including their music when they dance. Like, I think it's so amazing. So that would have to be my pick. 
Not I, for this I year. I think there's, there needs to be an asterisk. Right, right. <laughs> Not for this year. Not for this year, but all previous years we've been watching Dancing with the Stars, which has pretty much been, what, the last 11 years? Pretty much. 12? Yeah. I don't know. I got you into it mm-hmm. ap- after season like yeah. four. Diehard fans. Yeah. It's good stuff. So that, or now Community, were the paintball episodes, the Halloween episodes? They had so many paintball episodes. Right. Uh, they had they had a lot of Halloween party episodes, yeah, where they turn into zombies, right? And okay, each, in, in all of those, it would take on a different their episode would take on a different genre, right? And I love that. So, yeah. oh, Community is one of the greatest shows of all time, and music by Ludwig Göransson. Fun. <laughs> so when we do talk to Ludwig, it's like we don't want to talk Mandalorian; we want to talk Community. All right, for me. I love the America's Funniest Home Video Halloween episodes. Just (laughs) seeing the the stupid thing people do on Halloween. (laughs) Most of them having to deal with pranks that all go wrong. Yep. (laughs) I mean, it's just just really funny. There was one we just saw where the little boy saw his sister in a a witch mask, and he was Superman. Oh, yeah. He, He was... He was running around the house. He could he could outrun a locomotive the way he was running. So funny. And he was screaming, crying. Yeah, I okay. I feel I feel bad, but yeah, it's like when someone trips, you feel bad, but come on, it's funny. And also, I love the Office Halloween episodes, especially the one titled Halloween, where Dwight is dressed as a Sith Lord. Now, fans have named his Sith Lord Darth Beatus. Why is that? Because he works, he owns a beet farm. So oh, he's duh. Darth Beatus. Okay, I get it. And the way the Paul Feig, the director of this episode, he would shoot Dwight in a very Palpatine-ish way, where you see half his face sticking out of his cloak. I, lo- I love that. I love that so much. Nice. All right, let's read some of these other ones here. Okay. Kelly Turkell says, Boy Meets World Season 5. And then there was Sean, the Scream-influenced episode. Ooh. Mm. Mom loves the Home Improvement Halloween episode where pranks begin, I guess. So there's a bunch of pranks that happen during this episode. Courtney Turkell says, Simpson Treehouse of Horror episodes. A A winner every single time. Definitely. Every time. Joey Pittman says the How I Met Your Mother episodes were pretty great. I was looking. I thought Friends would be up there for me. And I was looking. And Friends only has like one Halloween episode. But their Thanksgiving episodes are off the charts. Mm -hmm. All right. Courtney Turkell says Sabrina the Teenage Witch when she makes too much candy corn. Yeah, you can't have too much candy corn. All right, never, never, ever. <laughs> Shamim Dana says, for me, it's Full House, Season 3, Episode 8, Divorce Court. Seems appropriate. <laughs> he also goes on by saying, Fuller House, Season 2, Episode 4, The Curse of Tanner. And Everybody Loves Raymond, Episode... Some th- epi- Halloween, Halloween episode. Candy. Halloween yeah. Candy. Halloween Candy, Episode Season 3 and Season 6. Wow. Well, Season 3, Episode 6. Okay. All right, now, Jason Roberts in the chat over here says, Not so much an episode, but it was a tradition when I was young to watch Poltergeist and The Thing with my dad after trick-or-treating. Good Good times, times, bad bad sleep. sleep. (laughs) Bad dates. Nice. All right. Dear Great Pumpkin, I'm looking forward to your arrival on Halloween night. They're back. All the little Peanuts characters in a happy Halloween special filled with ghosties and ghoulies and things that go bump in the night. It's The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, Monday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. All right, now, what tradition do you follow every single year? We all have our traditions that we must abide by. Sarah, what is your tradition that you must you must follow or you, you just can't put an end to the year. So I would have to say I have to play Michael Jackson's Thriller album at some point during the day or during trick-or-treating. And that usually works well paired with the Pirates of the Caribbean film. So I really like those two things. 
Okay. What about you? For me, I have got to watch the monster-themed monkeys episode, Monstrous Monkey Mash. And now I have to too, because I do like it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When all the boys get lost in a big haunted house, you have got a Dracula character, a vampire character. Oh yeah, and doesn't Mickey turn into Mickey turns into a, a werewolf. werewolf? That's fun. Davy Jones turns into a vampire. Peter turns into a. Uh, he's he's got a curse. He's cursed, so oh. he's like frozen solid right and mike turns into a mummy oh love this episode i love the fact that they're running around this this haunted house set piece and even the actors are like we can go down this hallway or down this hallway that's clearly a painted backdrop <laughs> funny funny very it's an episode that really is aware of itself because in, in the in the episode you actually hear james frawley directing mickey dolan's now do you want a big scare or a medium scare? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he's directing. <laughs> so they used they used an outtake in they used the the director directing Mickey. You hear his voice in the episode. I know that's good stuff. You never see that. It was really funny. All right, now David Braun says every Halloween because it is my late brother's birthday, I watch the original Star Wars, the original version of Star Wars. He took me to see it on May twenty fifth, nineteen seventy seven. It was the only theater in the area showing it, and the show we went to was sold out. We had to wait two hours in the pouring rain to see the next showing, and the rest is history. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Hunter Goatley says, For the last few years that my kids still lived at home, we watched Sleepy Hollow every Halloween night. The flow of trick-or-treaters had dried up years ago, so we just bought everyone's favorite candy, Turned off all the lights, watched the film, and gorged. It was great. Now, is this the 1999 Disney Sleepy Hollow? One with Ray Park? I don't know. Or I don't was know. it that Wind in the Willows? I don't know. Yeah, but, we, we won't talk about Wind in the Willows. But Christopher Marino says, I must watch Halloween on Halloween. <laughs> nice. Great. Now, Sarah, without, without looking, what film does... Courtney and Kelly Turkel have to watch. Could it be Hocus Pocus? Well, there you go. There you have it. And Kelly tags that with Adam's family, Casper, and the Monsters. Nice. When, they would, when she and Courtney would come back from trick-or-treating, it was movie time. <laughs> Kai Charles says, I watch the Universal Monster movies and eat way too many Halloween Oreos. Oh, those are good. Now, Jim Pruey, he make, he brings up a film here, which I'll have to see. Ooh. Looking forward to watching Son of Dracula from 1973. Kind of a slower version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show with a better soundtrack. Wait, what? What? Son of Dracula is a very obscure movie starring Ringo Starr and Harry Nilsson. And Harry Nilsson, he wrote the Popeye soundtrack. He's a singer-songwriter, and he wrote the song Cuddly Toy for the Monkees. And this is a half musical and half camp tribute to classic Hollywood horror films of the 1930s. Wow. The entire soundtrack is made up of Harry Nelson songs. Where has it, with Ringo Starr? So it's called Son of Dracula from yeah. 1973. Yeah. Interesting. We're going to have to put that on our list. Huh. Uh, I'm Freddy Krueger, and you're invited to my special get-together. But beware, you may never leave. Dial this number now. I've got some grisly details for you. And if you're one of my lucky callers selected at random, you'll talk to me live while you're awake and safe. So dial this number now if you dare. Talk to me live. Freddy Krueger is waiting just for you. Two dollars for the first minute, 35 cents each additional minute. So... Richard, what is that horror film that made it hard to get to sleep the night that you saw it? Paranormal Activity. <sighs> it, it's just thinking about it still keeps me up. You went and saw that without me because I would not see that. No, because you you were on your, your bachelorette party that night. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Dave and I went to go see Paranormal Activity. Okay. Because um, it was during October. October, yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> this movie harkens back to the original Alien. And we see these films once in a generation where it's a very slow build. Mm -hmm. It takes forever, but you're riveted. Because 
the little hints that they give you are just so terrifying that you want to leave, you want to look away. But it's like, how how could they top that last bit? The shadow on the door, the indentation on the bed from Paranormal Activity. And because these are things that could actually happen. This isn't a movie like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, that, that's a true story. But how often does someone with a chainsaw chase you around a, a cornfield? Right. Not right. very often. But no. every night you do go to bed in your bed. Yep. So when you go to bed, when I went to bed that night, um, and you weren't there, you were still out doing yeah. your bachelorette thing. And I'm looking over going, if I see those blankets move, I am so out of here. Nope. Nope. Well, uh, I do have to piggyback on that. Courtney says that her friend tricked her into seeing Paranormal Activity 4. I had to sleep in the living room with the lights on. To this day, I will never look at owls the same way. You know, I think I slept with the, with the lights on. Flashlights on, lights, every, every every light I could find. Turn all the computers on, whatever I could do. No. that was That was the most terrifying movie I've ever seen. A movie with no blood, no guts, no gore. Just a little twisted action in the end. The paranormal activity? Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Okay, read the rest of what Courtney says. Oh, she says, E.T. gave me nightmares. Literally thought he was under my bed as a child. <laughs> Aww. Oh, yeah. Well, was he? I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of with you, Courtney. I saw it too young, and that first part freaked me out with the red hearts glowing. I couldn't handle that. Brian Babcock says, does it have to be a horror movie? Because cats made it really hard for me to sleep. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Alan Sanborn says, the exorcist made it very hard to fall asleep. I finally saw it as a teen when it came to the Z channel and watched it alone. <gasps> I recall thinking that the omen had been scarier while I was watching it, but I was pretty sure I wasn't, I wasn't the Antichrist, whereas while lying in bed... The thought that I could be possessed by the devil seemed a much more real threat. Huh. I've never seen The Omen. Okay. Wow. No, I, I haven't seen either of those. Christopher Marino also agrees that The Exorcist gave him yeah. some I saw it during nightmares. the re-release in like the year 2001. Which one? Exorcist? Exorcist, yeah. And yeah, it was it was still freaky. I saw it. All right, so it. Alan continues by saying, The movie that freaked me out as a kid was called Black Sabbath. I thought that was a band led by Ozzy Osbourne. Didn't know it was a movie. Mm-hmm. Directed by Mario Pava. It's a trilogy of horror movies narrated by Boris Karloff. And one of them involves a nurse who, when the elderly woman she's taking care of dies, she steals the ring off her finger. She is then relentlessly haunted by the ghost of the old woman. I had major nightmares from that one. I am not surprised by that. You don't steal someone's wedding ring. Come on. Yeah, she I don't care it. if they are dead. She had it coming. She had it coming. <laughs> yeah, this got, it reminds me of Trilogy of Terror. This was a a film of the 1970s. You had a lot of these anthology films. And the last film was Karen Black. She had gotten this little tribal doll and it attacked her. Oh. And they pretty much shot the whole thing from the little monster's point of view. Huh. And that scared me. In the end, she threw it in the oven. Spoiler alert. Threw it in the oven and burnt it to a crisp. And she's trying, she's holding the oven closed. And you can hear this thing going hog wild in the, in the oven as she's burning it to a crisp. Huh. And, it was, and then she gets possessed by this little demon. And at the very end, she hears a knock on the door. And it's her mother. And she grabs a knife. And she's huddled in a corner. And her teeth grow to be fangs. Okay, not seeing that either. Mm -mm. All right, Amanda Bakken says, I had seen parts of Poltergeist when I was a child and had nightmares for years, not even knowing where the dreams came from until I saw it again when I was a teenager. Ooh. How crazy is that? Mm. I loved Poltergeist when I was a kid. Well, I wasn't a kid. I was 13. Mm. But I knew it was from the same effects team that brought you all the Star Wars films. So when I'm watching these effects of these monsters and the skeletal ghost. I'm like, oh, wow. I bet Richard Edlund did that. Let's read this last one from Denise Power. She says, Invasion of the Saucer Men. I watched it on TV when I was a kid. My mom actually cautioned me about watching it and that it might give me nightmares. 
I poo-pooed the idea. But later that week, I had the worst nightmare of my life. It was incredibly real. And when I finally woke up and cried out for my mom, she literally had to sing me to sleep. Well, she did warn you, Denise. <laughs> Oh, I do enjoy an evening with a little light entertainment. But when your video heads get dirty, you lose your picture. Not a pretty sight. Happily, this new Polaroid video cassette will help you. It actually cleans your heads as it plays, so dirty heads needn't haunt you. New Polaroid video cassettes. Get the picture? All right, now, what is the scariest thing you've ever seen in real life outside of a movie or TV show? Yikes. All right, let's 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 start here with Eric Unkenhout. Okay. He says, when I was a kid, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I swear my bedroom was rearranged. I went in the kitchen to get a flashlight and went back to my room, and it was normal. I thought it was different because the ladder for my bunk was on the wrong side of my bed and my bed was up against the wall and it wasn't normally like that. To this day, I have no idea what happened. That's some freaky deaky stuff. That is really weird. All right, Amanda Bakken, she writes, not the scariest, but the most supernatural. When I was 13, I came home from camp and my family had moved me into my sister's larger and recently vacated bedroom. I was so excited. But every night, in the middle of the night, I would hear someone walking in the attic above me. No one but myself and my mother were in the house, and she was always in bed when I would hear the footsteps. In the morning, she told me I must have heard a mouse. But no, they were clearly human footsteps. After a few weeks of this freaking me out every night, I decided it was time to ask my sister. I was disappointed to find out she had never heard the footsteps, but she did tell me that the man who lived there before us had died in the house. Mm. So the footsteps continued, and eventually I decided to make a bargain with with what I was now 100% convinced was a ghost. In the middle of the night, I spoke out loud to him from my bed and asked him if he wouldn't mind not walking around while I was awake, and he is welcome to stay, but I would appreciate it if he would wait until I fell asleep. I never heard the footsteps again. Looking back now... Perhaps it was the imagination of an X-Files obsessed 13-year-old, and that was the problem. Wow. But honestly, I got chills. Yeah. In that story. Yeah. That's so creepy. That is very, very freaky. Now, this next one is even freakier because this one comes from my cousin, Barbara Ann Stone. Okay. And she's talking about the house I visited many, many times. Ooh. She writes, we had multiple ghosts. There was a lady in a rocking chair and a man in my bedroom. I never saw him, but my sister did. Occasionally, I heard things and felt creepy. Looking back, I'm thinking, how did I never sense a ghost in this house? This house was a million years old and held together with logs and and sticks. And no matter where you went, the floors creaked. Uh So reading this, my first thought was, yeah, of course it was haunted. And my second thought was, That was haunted? (laughs) Had I known it was haunted, I would have visited many more times. (laughs) Wow. So I reached out to Barbara Ann and said, what? She said, oh, yeah, I thought everyone knew this. Yeah, that house had definite ghosts in it. Wow. (sighs) Okay. (sighs) Well, I'll read this one from Connie She. She says, several years ago, a good friend of mine from England sent me her wedding photos, When I had a closer look at one particular photo, I noticed a ghostly face slightly behind and next to my friend and her new husband. Needless to say, it was eerie. When I pointed this out to my friend, her response was, oh yes, that's my mother. Although it freaked me out, I also felt it was comforting that her mother was with my friend at her wedding. Now she doesn't specify whether (laughs) her friend's mother was dead at this point, I'm guessing. Well, yeah, chances are. Yeah. Wow. That's wow. That's, Interesting. Yeah, that that's that's borderline yay, but on the other side, ugh, yeah. Ugh. All right, so I'm going to read my mom had a response to this. 
Uh, what is the scariest thing you've ever seen in real life outside of a movie? And mom mentioned live coverage of the second Twin Tower on 9-11 implode in real time. My entire body felt a sadness like I had never experienced. It was like I felt the pain of all those souls. Oh, oh I recall seeing that. That was pretty terrifying. Yes. And honestly, I for me, I would have to echo that. I, I mean, nothing really compares to that. And my mom had actually woken me up that day because I was on here in the West Coast. So it was quite early for us. And I also saw the second tower go down, but I had just woken up. My brain couldn't wrap its head around the fact that what I was actually seeing was real. It was not from a movie. And that to me was the scary part. Mm -hmm. Like all these things, destruction you see in movies. It's like, no, this could actually happen. Like stop with these crazy destruction destructive movies you know oh yeah I, i'm gonna piggyback off of that and just when i was in my tiktok obsessed summer yes <laughs> this who, year who am i kidding i'm so obsessed with it watching those riot videos oh. uh, i that those the things that i saw i wouldn't even want to repeat was just, was they were just so disturbing that I couldn't look away because I wanted to see what was happening. But at the same time, as I'm going through each video, I just know that these images and thoughts are going to keep me up at night. Mm. Oh. Okay, yeah. let's, let's back away from that one. Yeah. All right. Now, Jason Roberts, he says, I was 10 in 1981 when my grandfather passed away. I wanted to stay with my grandmother to help her feel better. She warned me that if I heard footsteps in the middle of the night coming up the stairs, it was just Grandpa coming home from work, as he did when he was alive. I thought she was messing with me. No joke. I heard footsteps. Never checked to see for sure. <laughs> Ugh. Wow. Ugh. He's just checking up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. that, that's, a good, that's a good grandfather. Yeah. All right. Now I'm getting the heebie-jeebies. Let's move yeah. on. Yeah. Hi there, guys and ghouls. It's me, Elvira, the queen of Halloween. And tonight, I'm having my Halloween party right here at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. Oh. After Elvira shows you the weirdest, scariest videos ever made, the terror continues with Alice Cooper live in Detroit at midnight Eastern. <laughs> Elvira at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific Time, followed by Alice Cooper in concert at midnight Eastern, 11 Central, 9 Pacific. A Halloween you'll remember. A Halloween you won't be able to forget on MTV. Last one there's a Halloweeny. Let's let's go to this fun, lighthearted question, Richard. Monsters versus the Atoms. Which is your favorite and why? The Monsters. Why? Because in the Monsters, you had a Frankenstein character. That was Herman Munster. You had his wife, Lily, who was a vampire. You had the son, who was a wolfman. Okay. And you had Grandpa, who was a vampire. So you had a nice array of characters, whereas Adam's family, they were, they were, they were goth. Okay. Of course, you had Lurch, who was like an, an econo-Frankenstein Right. You had Slash it. zombie. You had Cousin It, who was... The, the, that was the only character... If I ever watched the show, I watched it for Cousin It. Because it looks looked, looked, looked like this big, hairy character from Lidsville. And then you had Thing, <laughs> which was the disembodied hand. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But huh. but I, I couldn't watch The Addams Family because of that hand. There was a Michael Caine movie called The Hand... Where he's he's in a car and he's pointing out the window and a truck comes by, and guess what happens? Yeah, wipes his hand clean off, decapitates his hand. Yeah, decapitate. So, so now his hand is out there moving around. What on its own? That's crazy. That that you know what? I'll I'll go back to saying that's one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. I'm sure watching it now, it's like pff, come on, but. My friends and I would freak each other out by saying, Wait, th there's, there's the hand over there. That was the hand. And it, no matter what, no matter when the situation was, it would just freak us all out just by saying the hand. Mm. Now you go to the Adams family and here's this disembodied hand. Nope. Nope. Couldn't do it. Mm -mm. Okay. 
All right. Did you have a preference? I, I can't imagine this no. being up your alley. No, I didn't watch either of these series. Like, mm-hmm. I think I, the Adams Family films came out when I was kind of a little beyond the age of the films, but I watched them and I was like, okay. But it didn't make a big impression on me. So I can't really answer either way. Okay. Then we will read Kelly Turkell's answer. Monsters were so funny. I loved Herman's laugh. Oh. All right. Christopher Marino says, Adam's family was better written. The Monsters was just a sitcom. But the Monsters also had a dragon that lived underneath the stairs. Jason Roberts agrees with you, Richard. Monsters, better theme song. A dragon? They had a dragon that lived underneath the stairs. Whoa. And Butch Patrick, who played the son, he, the son, Eddie, he was also in the Monkey's Christmas episode. Oh. So, come on. It was oh. it's all right there. Well, there you go. All right. My brother-in-law, Chuck Berry, says, Monsters were creepy. Adam's family were just weird. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were too goth for me. Oh. Joey Pittman says, Both are classic, but got to go with the monsters. Nice. All right. Uh, Jody Watson says, Adam's family, they had a much cooler house. Mm. <laughs> okay. Ted Dastic Jr., Monsters, was always funnier. Plus, fast motion. Oh, they would speed up the, the film. Ooh, fun. And they had a better car. Come on. <laughs> always came down to that better car. So final, final Halloween question. With haunted theme parks and haunted houses closed this year, what is everyone doing to make this Halloween special? Besides listening to this episode. Virtual Trick or Treating 2020. (laughs) Yay! And thank you for everyone who has submitted your video clips. I'm in the process of putting them all together right now. Yeah, you're working hard on that. It's pretty, it's going to be really fun. All right. Also, uh, what else are are we going to do, Sarah? We're going to walk the neighborhood every single night. Yeah, we've been doing that. It's been really fun. We go to like different neighborhoods around our area. We'll, one night we'll go this spoke of the wheel. The next night we'll go 90 degrees the other way. So Halloween isn't just like that one night or that one week. We, we start Halloween well, <laughs> November 1st, <laughs> but we, we like walking around the neighborhood, looking at everyone's decorations, see who's putting up something new or what they're doing, mm-hmm. the lights, the whole construction of some of these front yard tableaus are, are just great. And, and that's what we're doing to make this Halloween special. And speaking of front yard tableaus, we put up our Halloween decorations on what, October 1st, I think. Mm-hmm. And we have this giant Darth Vader that's as tall as our house with a big pumpkin in front of him. We've got a pumpkin patch with a little BB-8 hiding behind it, as well as a black cat on one of the pumpkins. We have a Kylo Ren. Uh, what else do we have? Job of the Hut. Yeah, Job of the Hut. That's it. Okay. Yeah. There's lots of cute things. And this has been like a source of endless joy for our neighborhood mm. and our neighborhood kids. Because I'll be sitting here and right out my window, I can see the front yard and I can hear when like a little kid is like squealing or yay, you know, like saying hi or scared. Some of them are scared of Darth <laughs> Vader. It is very big and imposing. And one little girl came by the other day and she came with her dad and she was waving and saying hi to every single one of the inflatables we had. And I looked at, I noticed she did have Down syndrome. So she was just like in her world saying hi. And she would like, hi, Darth Vader. Hi, Jeb. <laughs> hi. And then she did it again. And then she did it again and again. It was like so, so sweet. She was so happy. So like uh, to me, that's been my Halloween. Mm-hmm. Last year, we didn't put up our decorations until like the second week of October. And neighbors would come by and are you guys going to put up your Halloween decorations? My my kids love them. It's like, oh, oh, hold on, hold on. 
yeah, that day we're digging out boxes from the garage, blowing things up, making sure these kids have got something to see. Because as a kid, these these memories stick with me, seeing Halloween decorations, seeing Halloween haunted houses, these Halloween imprints have just made such a lasting effect on me. And I love this time of year. It makes me happy. If it can make them happy, I'm all over that. Sometimes we'll be pulling up and we'll see some kids in our yard. And the parents are like, oh, oh, get, get over here, get over here. It's like, no, 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 no. As, as long as they're safe and they're not tripping over these tethered cords, you know, keep an eye on them. But if they want to go in there and touch things, that's that's fine. That's, yeah. that's you know, if they're having fun with it, that's why it's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been so cool. Yeah. Then we take everything down and 48 hours later, we put up our Christmas decorations. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go over some comments Okay. here. Connie is watching Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, oh Connie, she, there you go. All right, Courtney Turkell, watching everything Halloween right now, like everything on 31 Nights of Halloween. And Kelly says, buying all the Halloween candy and eating it. <laughs> hey, awesome. leave me that candy corn. <laughs> Uh, Mom is also Norma Heitman and my dad. They're, they've been watching Halloween movies at night and plan to decorate outside of our home this weekend to brighten up the spirits in our neighborhood. So did you decorate, Mom? Because it's coming up. Time's a ticket. Mm-hmm. Four more four more days till Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. Four more days till Halloween. Silver Shamrock. Very good. Okay, shh. Christopher Marino says, Knott's Taste of fall Halloween was pretty fun, too. Oh, we missed out on that one. We did. We missed out on tickets. And now Knott's has just announced their Knott's Taste of Mary Farm. Now, okay, so I have a question about that because we originally didn't do the Knott's Taste of fall Halloween because it seemed like all food. And that food is very good, but very filling. So, like, we wanted, is there more to do besides just the food? That's what I want to know. Yeah, uh, Joey Pittman had posted a picture, and he was walking by some of these facades, and there were monsters up in the windows. <gasps> How fun! Yeah, yeah. Aww. All right, Joshua Jordan says, my girlfriend and I are watching over the Garden Wall perfect Halloween cartoon. It's called Over the Garden Wall. Oh. <laughs> so, he didn't okay. capitalize. No. Okay, so you're watching, what is it, Over the Garden Wall? Yes. What is that? Apparently a perfect Halloween <laughs> cartoon. <laughs> oh, that's right there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, Christopher Reno says the park was fully decorated. Oh, <sighs> should we buy our tickets for this? Yeah. You know what? Maybe they'll go, they'll extend past October 31st. No, they've already. Yeah, they're they're on to the next thing. All right. Well, apparently Christopher Marino has has seen over the garden over wall. The, <laughs> I've never heard of this. <laughs> wow. Goodness gracious. Have you heard of this? No. Mm-mm. Okay. All right. All right. So let's let's wrap up our Halloween fun right there because Woo. I think we are just full, full to the brim, stuffed, can't move, got to unbutton our pants. We are so much full of Halloween fun and and excitement. Now we should have brought Halloween candy to this too, so we could be full of Halloween candy. <gasps> oh, you know what? We still have some some candy corn. Oh, yes, we do. All right. Now, if you want to see some more of the comments and posts, well, go over there to the Skywalking Through Neverland Facebook group. Yay. And comment yourself. We want to hear what you have to say. All right. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween, Silver Shamrock. No! In a Weebles haunted house, Weebles wobble all about, and it's a real exciting place to be. A smiling ghost with glowing face has a secret hiding place, and that's not all, there's plenty more to see. Because a Weebles haunted house is a great place to be. Weebles haunted house, including glow-in-the-dark Weeble ghost from Ramper Room. Well, that wraps up episode 307 of Skywalking Through Neverland. We want to thank all of you Skywalkers for commenting on all of those Halloween posts. We loved them. We loved reading them. We loved reading them off. We loved sharing them. And we want to thank everyone for watching us on our live stream right here, right now. And thank you for listening to the show every week. 
it's so exciting. Now, Skywalkers, don't forget, sign up to receive our weekly newsletter. You can sign up by clicking on the link in the show notes, or you can head to skywalkingthroughneverland.com and look for the tab, sign up for the newsletter, and bing, join. We also want to thank our sponsor, Small World Vacations, for their continued support. Thinking of a trip to Disney parks? Yeah, always. Well, you can fill out a get a quote form at smallworldvacations.com today. Their vacation planning service is free of charge, so check it out and tell them that Skywalking Through Neverland sent you. Do you love Skywalking Through Neverland and want more content? Yeah, we do. Consider becoming a member of the Skywalking Force. That's our Patreon. And our bonus content begins at only $5 a month. So head to skywalkingforce.com, have a look at the options. And it's been really fun to do those behind the scenes little fun preparations for the Neverland Clubhouse podcast and all kinds of things we've been adding there. We've been just posting different things. And thank you to those of you who are already part of the Skywalking Force. Now, we are part of the Skywalking Network. Sky where you can find other great shows like Talking Apes, Classic Marvel Star Wars Comics, the Max Effects Podcast, and now the Neverland Clubhouse. You can also join us for Pop Culture Trivia Nights. Which most likely will be moved to Fridays. Indeed. Starting this week, but <laughs> details to follow. Details to follow. Pay attention to your weekly newsletter, Skywalkers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still looking for Skywalking Through Neverland? Can't find us? Well, I'll go ahead over there to jedinews.co.uk and Fanthatrax, and we're right there, too. You can also find us on social media. We are at Skywalking Pod for Twitter and Instagram and maybe TikTok. You can also join our Facebook group. Just search Skywalking Through Neverland group and request to join. And then you can also email us, share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. All right, now don't forget to stick around for bloopers and other fun little bits that didn't make it into the show. And always remember... Happy, happy Halloween. 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 Happy, happy, happy Halloween. Halloween. Silver Shamrock. Shamrock. You did it! Oh, she did it. <laughs> Never land on Alderaan. To our Skywalkers and Tweetwalkers, thanks for listening. Skywalking Through Neverland is created and produced by Richard and Sarah Woloski. Original music by Rob Dellinger. Creative consultant, Mark Ogushowitz. Technical advisor, Peter Heitman. Facebook administrators, Donald Wicks, Joey Pittman, and Norma Heitman. Skywalking Through Neverland is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Any sounds, music, and clips played during this podcast are the property of their copyright holders. All original content is property of Skywalking Through Neverland, all rights reserved. Sorry, had to be said. This is what you can look forward to on episode 307 <laughs> of Skywalking Through Neverland. I love that. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> it's getting late. Come no, on, no. there you go. I tried. No, no. Hold on. No, I, I. the reason I'm yawning is I try not to like breathe too loud into the microphone, so I like end up holding my breath. Okay. Okay. As an editor, I appreciate that. I know, or because I heard <gasps> No, I heard myself <gasps> one time and my breathing was really loud. I was like, why am I breathing so loud? So ever since then, I like have been not breathing and then therefore I yawn a lot because gotta control your breathing. My okay. air you is know like and I appreciate intake. it. Okay. Why they didn't ever have a monster serial Saturday morning cartoon, I'll never know. It it would work as a commercial. And we all, as kids, we all loved these characters. Oh, they really missed the boat on that. Well, then you would have all these groups saying, hey, you know what, you can't, you're a commercial, you're a Saturday morning cartoon, but Saturday morning cartoons were just a big commercial for toys anyway. <sighs> all right, let's, let's move on. Richard, what is the horror film that makes it hard to get to sleep at night once you see it? And let me try that again. Goodbye and good night and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> happy, happy Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween. Silver, 